Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Worst Effing Gamer. I'm back with another video, guys. Today we are going to take a look at the top 10 awakened heroes in the game. Okay, this is my opinion on the top 10 heroes that you should focus on when you finally reach level 90. Uh, first of all, excuse me real quick. I kind of seem to have lost my voice a little bit, alright? So I might sound a little bit like I'm sick, but I'm not. Alright, so let's begin this video with the number 10. Awakened hero on my list so coming in at number 10 guys We have Magnus the simple reason is because there's not that many backliners in the game So this guy automatically gets a super boost because he's in the back also He's just really really powerful in the arena. He does a lot of damage in the arena He, he can potentially take out two to three heroes on his own if he gets his ultimate off towards the end of the battle his main usability is only in the arena raids Hall of Legends, you will not get the most out of him, so he's just a great arena hero, but you can certainly get the top rank in the arena having this guy as your backliner, for sure. And at number 9, we have Octo. Octo is very, very usable, guys. This guy is one of the most versatile heroes in the game. He's not only easy to get, because you can get him in the Crucible of Fire shop, but he's usable in the arena, he's usable in the Hall of Legends. That is also, uh, a really, really good thing. And he's just good all around in the game. Somebody that you can um, you can get earlier on in the game. And then you can also bring him up to level very, very quickly, alright? Don't let his looks fool you guys. At first when I saw him, I said, this guy is no way he's going to be good in the game. But once I learned, I awakened him. This guy is so powerful. Very, very good. He's not going to be the one that does the most damage on your team. But he certainly will definitely lead to a lot of arena wins. And also... A lot of top damages in the Hall of Legends because Octo has an ability which lowers um, your opponent's physical damage, right? So the physical damage taken is reduced by 38%. This is the second ability. The shield is very, very useful in the Hall of Legends, all right? So that's why I put Octo as my number nine all around best awakened hero. Coming in at number seven. And we have Garik, the super duper muscular mutant bounty hunter. This guy is incredible with legs made out of tree trunks and biceps bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. This guy is so amazing, guys. So usable in so many different assets of the game. Raids, Hall of Legends, Arena, Crucible of Fire. Just you name it. This guy, you can use him. Really, really cool, all right? You can get him in the shop earlier in the game, so he's free to play. And his physical attack is really good. His ultimate will not do any damage, but it doesn't really matter. His ultimate will speed up your team, will haste them. So I put him in at number 7. Just because this guy is so usable in so many assets of the game. And he's just an all-powerful hero. So I love Garik. Make sure that he's one of your top awakened heroes. And at number 6, we have Oricon. Oricon the Soul Eater is a super beast guys now he's not free to play just yet but he should be getting released soon I feel and once he is make sure you get him and level him up all the way all right arena this guy is a top tier hero for the arena he's also usable in one hall of legend and not really in the raids though you don't really see many teams doing top damage with Oricon on the team but either way this guy is a beast because he's going to help you out in your tower of fortress He's so amazing in the arena that I put him at number 6 in front of my, uh, you know, all the other guys. But all these guys can be interchanged either way, alright? So I put him at number 6 because of his arena tier. And if you get this guy, work on him right away. I'm not sure when they're going to release him. I hope it's pretty soon. But make sure you guys awaken your Oricon. Alright, so at number 5, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go with Gorum. And you might be thinking, Gorum, holy hell, this guy is so nasty. He's so good. How the hell is he in 5? Uh, that's because the top four guys are really good as well. So I'm going to go with Gorum here. Um, first of all, top tier in the arena. Really, really useful in the Hall of Legends. Goddamn, this guy is useful in a few Hall of Legends. Um, raids, a few raids as well. Top boss raids, you can use him. And what more do you need, guys? This guy just looks awesome. Look at that freaking card. It's incredible. So I love him and every asset of the game if you get gorum he's not available just yet so he should be getting released soon as well but if you do get gorum make sure you take this guy all the way man believe me stop whatever you're doing get your gorum bring him all the way to orange plus two and awaken him as soon as you can please this guy is going to help you out tremendously guys i promise you that number four we have the invisible threat volko wow 
you will not see uh, more people doing more damage than Valko, guys. This guy is by far my favorite Crucible of Fire hero. He will single-handedly destroy the first nine levels of the Crucible of Fire by himself. He's so nasty. His ultimate is insane in the arena. He's very useful in the arena. If you get off his ultimate, it's gonna be a kill for one or two guys. Crazy damage. Pretty much in like all the raids. You use him in a lot of raids as well. Hall of Legend, I don't use him in probably any of the Hall of Legend. So that's his downside. But he's just so good in all other assets that I put him in as my number four hero in the Awakening tier. Uh, just a really, really good hero, guys. That's all I really got to say about him. So when this guy comes out, make sure you awaken him as well. Really good. And the tier that I'm putting him in is pretty fair. You probably want to awaken him in front of Gorum. Just because of his uh, really nasty attack power in the arena. But you can go with either one, alright? They're, kind of, they're really interchangeable here. And at number three, we have another frontline tank. I mean, what's going on? A lot of frontliners here, guys. But he's just that good. Petros is in freaking sane. This guy is so nasty. You have no idea. This guy's power is incredible. So... The best thing about Petros is once you awaken him, he becomes so much more deadly. He's okay, pre-awakened, not that good. He will not do that much damage. After you awaken him, he gets his awakening ability, which will cover his whole body in lava, thus dealing damage to enemies that are attacking Petros from in front, right? So they have to be attacking him from the front. That's the catch. But... They attack him and they deal damage back to them, alright? So that's the thing about Petros. Really, really high damage dealing. Really useful in the arena. But it's not really useful really in anything else. But it's just, I feel like he's the number one tank in the arena that you could possibly use. Awaken. So that's why I put him so high up. I just love this guy, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I really love him a lot. Uh, if you had to go... For all around, I would probably work on Volko or Gorum a little bit before Petros. But I love Petros personally, so I put him as my number three hero in the Awakening tier, right? So go ahead, get Petros, awaken him. Either way, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to love this guy. He's a beast. When he comes out, you're ready for him. Letting you know right now, he should definitely be one of your top ten Awakened heroes for sure. All right, on to the next one. All right, guys, so this is where it gets interesting. At number two... This guy can easily be number one, to, to be honest. One and two can change up a lot here because they're so nasty. But coming in at number two is none other than Vernos. What a big surprise. You might think, what am I talking about? This guy is insane. But if you are in the top of the game, if you're at the top, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a little bit lower, then you don't know what I'm talking about. Vernos is incredible, guys. Believe me, he is a top two hero in the game just because he's so goddamn good in the raids and in the Hall of Legends. He's not really useful in the arena. So this is the catch about Vernos. If you're trying to get, you know, top five in the arena, he's not going to be one of your heroes in there, right? But if you're trying to be top five or top two or the top in raids, this guy will be your man, all right? You're going to need him in the Hall of Legends and in the raids. Top tier in both of those things. Not top tier in the arena. But top tier in my awakening list. Either way, you got to make sure that this guy is one of your top awakened heroes. Just because of his, you know, usability in those, you know, Hall of Legends and raids. So make sure Vernos is one of your top guys that you awaken. Believe me, you do not want to mess around and be one of the last people in your server to awaken Vernos. You're going to fall behind in the raids and in the Hall of Legends. I promise you. Whoever awakens Vernos first in your server is going to probably get the top spot in the Hall of Legends for like a while. That's for sure. I can almost guarantee you that, right? So that's Vernos for you. So let's move on to number one and let's see who it's going to be. All right. So surprise, surprise, guys. It's no one other than Silphy. I don't know if you guys kind of thought it was somebody else, but I never doubted it. So Silphy could be two. You could put Vernos as one, but Silphy, I would say, is your number one, the best awakened hero that you should probably awaken first in the game. Her usability is nonstop in every asset of the whole game hall of legend prophecy pool raids um arena crucible of fire she's just versatile usable everywhere all around so if you do have Sylphie, go ahead and just awaken her first 
right? And you can go down the, uh, you know, the list that I gave you and you will not go wrong with that list. Trust me, it'll help you out tremendously if you're new. Sylphie is just a really, really good hero, guys. And plus, her ability, Awakened Ability, the Sorcerer's Medallion, will also boost up all of your other sorcerers. So that's why she becomes that much better. The other heroes are a lot better on their own, but she will help out everybody else on the team. So that's why she becomes that much more usable than everybody else. All right. So that's why she comes in at number one on my list here. So all top 10 guys are very useful heroes that you're definitely going to need to awaken eventually in the game. If you go down my list, it'll help you a lot. Now, there are also a lot of special mentions that I need to actually mention because uh, I feel like they've become a lot better since we've talked. But... Some heroes that I wanted to, you know, not neglect. And I'm going to do this by going to the Awakening Board. Alright, so here we are in the Awakening Board once again, guys. And I'm just going to mention up a couple of quick other heroes that I feel, you know, deserve honorable mentions here. Because you don't want to sleep on them as well, alright? So, uh, first thing I want to talk about is Sumiko. Sumiko is very, very useful. Alright, so make sure that if you do have Sumiko, she's going to be really useful in your Hall of Legends. You go ahead and you can awaken her, you know, as your 11th probably hero. And she's really, really good. Rayman is probably another special mention. You know, he's probably top tier in front of all these other heroes. Osiris, another great Hall of Legend hero that you should definitely think about, you know, awakening first after the top 10. And one more I will say that you should uh, think about awakening after your top 10, it would probably be Melroth because this guy is really, really good in the arena, guys. Melroth is used in the top, you know, 5, 10 guys in my arena. So he's really powerful. So go ahead, work on those guys. They're not going to let you down. If you just follow the list, the top 10, because right now we have 53 Awakening Heroes. So you could easily go wrong, make a mistake, work on the wrong guy, and it'll set you back for weeks, you know. So follow the list, guys. I won't let you down, promise those heroes are usable all around the game. Hope you enjoy that. I hope it helped you out a lot. This is for a lot of the newer players. I know the older players, you guys already know what to do, so you don't have to worry about this. But the newer players, I know you guys need some advice on which heroes you should be working on. So I hope this helps you out. Once again, your boy Worst Effing Gamer. I'm out of here, guys. Peace out. Much love.